Hi guys, welcome to LaFort Daily Demos. Today I'm going to show you a quick trick using Photoshop and uh, hue and saturation um, to modify or adjust a, a chair or something and for your images. So you can look at multiple color studies uh, for your product design or interiors. Um, so, oh, well, go ahead and save that. Um, so for example, I'm going to go over here to, here's the image that I just showed you. And uh, for this, we're going to use image, adjustments, hue, and saturation. And I like to always use the command key, uh, command U, the shortcut key, command U. On the PC, it's going to be control U. So um, if I say command U, then uh, if you're on a PC, just try to remember that's control U. I'll try to remember when I go through it. Anyway, so for an image like this, it's very simple. Um, hue and saturation, what it does is, uh, let's go back here, hue and saturation. All it does is it gives you a breakdown of hue, meaning it's color, basically it's color. Uh, the saturation, how much uh, vibrancy uh, of color is there or how much are you pulling color out of it, and lightness and darkness. And as you can see, as we slide lightness or darkness, for example, it's actually affecting the background. Um, and likewise with saturation, we get we can push this so far that you start to get even in the grayscale um, or the black and white parts of the of the chair, you see it starts turning magenta or purple or something. So we need to control that a little bit better, uh, almost always. Now, in some cases, I pull up an image like this. This is uh, from the web, and what I did is I made a copy of that background that layer, uh, so, and I deleted the white back uh, with using the selection tool. So in this case, if I use hue and saturation, if I use hue and saturation on this, it's gonna be a bit more isolated to just affecting, obviously, just the base and the seat, which is the, where there, there's the color primarily. So it's very easy, quick uh, way to adjust um, the color of, a, of an object, a chair or something, um, as you need. So. I'll go ahead and cancel that, pop back over here, take a look at our, barn, our, our Arneo ball chair. Likewise with this uh, sofa sketch, if I use hue and saturation, command U or control U on the PC, command U on the Macs. Um, again, if we push the hue, maybe I wanna play around and uh, I wanna propose for my client a little bit more of an earthy tone, uh, maybe, um, well, if you go to one end of the spectrum, uh, you might li hit the limit and you just go back to the other end and see where it picks up over there on the left of the, of the spectrum. So you are not locked in on one side. It looks a little bit reddish on this end of the spectrum. It's kind of a nice warm beige tone there. I could pull some tone out of it. But if you notice, the wood base is now looking maybe more chrome or metal. Uh, we've lost the color completely. So again, in this example, um, I have to isolate the sofa cushion or seat, the blue part, from the base because I don't want to affect the base. So in this in this example, I'm going to use the lasso key, L for lasso key, hot key, and I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool instead of the freehand lasso. Freehand is very hard to control. It's good for um, quick selections, like oh, I want to isolate that. Uh, but if you need to do something more precise. I highly recommend you just use the polygon lasso. You can draw straight lines very quickly. If you need to do a little curve, you just do little short clicks, short line segment clicks. And well, I'll select out here where I'll get some of that, um, the marker, which extends a little bit beyond the line. I don't wanna be too precise here. If you feel like you wanna add to your selection, just hold the shift key down you get the cursor that shows a little plus sign on it and you just click inside your selection and I'm gonna go ahead and add my sketch lines here just so that they're kind of colorized a little bit with it uh, I don't like the way that selection looks okay something like that perhaps and now when we go to our hue and saturation again command U or control U on the PC um, when I slide my hue to the left or to the right as I start to push the textile uh, color value. Um, I'm not affecting anything but the selection, only what's in the selection. 
So I'm going to push it here towards that orange spectrum and just take the saturation out of it, which is just pulling color out. And I just zoomed out using Command minus on my keyboard. So even though I'm in the dialog, the hue and saturation dialog window, I can still make that modification or zoom in and out to see my image better. If I want it to be more gray, you know, more earth tone gray, warm gray, it could have a cool gray or a warm gray cast that's got a greenish gray cast. A cool gray is in this bluish uh, violet spectrum. Um, anyway, whatever, whatever it is I'm after, there's my, my selection, my modification, and, and I'm, I can hit OK and it's done. Now you could also, if you are a little bit concerned, you want to maybe explore some variations, you might, while you have this selection on, go ahead and just duplicate your background, duplicate that background layer. And you can now modify and you can have different variations going. So let's go ahead and go back to hue and saturation. So I have my original, which will be unaffected, the original background, which is the blue one. I'm going to go ahead and push this again into my grays, something like that. And now I've got a gray variation and a blue variation on separate layers. And if I need to uh, maybe compare them side by side for a study or something, then I can Command T on my keyboard or Control T. That brings up Transform, and I can just scale this one down like that. I'll go to my background. I'll duplicate that background again, just in case I need to I make a mistake. Simpl select all, Command A and Command T on that layer and transform it as well. And if I go back to background copy, go to multiply, we'll see if we get any remnants through there. It looks fine to me. I like the overlap of the sketch sometimes. It's uh, it's quite nice. In fact, I'll, I'll modify what I just said and say I like it most of the time with little exception, actually. Um, I like seeing the sketch through the drawings and a little bit of layering and overlapping. I think it just makes it a little bit more dynamic and, and engaging. Um, so there you go. There's a couple variations side by side. Um, I'm going to try and keep this video relatively short. So back on this guy, if I want to do the same kind of thing, I'm going to duplicate my background layer. Now my background is duplicated and I can scale this as I need or change the color. Again, if I do hue and saturation, if I just do it in a general way, something like that, my shadow is actually discoloring because there's tone in there, right? There's value. And in the blacks, the blacks went a little bit green in this case. So if I really need to isolate that, then in this case, I'm going to use my marquee selection draw an elliptical marquee. And in this case, I'm scaling the marquee out using my option key on my keyboard. To manipulate this elect, uh, selection, you go to select the select menu, go to transform selection, rotate that selection around. And now you can kind of shrink it, stretch it, distort it, do what you need to do to get it pretty close to the, the shape. If you need a more precise selection of it, then you might need to just draw um, using the lasso tool, um, isolate the isolate the object a little bit more precisely, or the area that you're trying to affect a little bit more precisely. Just like we did on the last one, just take your time to go around the curves. Just do it. Don't do it freehand. Use the polygon lasso, and um, just do little incremental selections. So that's pretty close. I'm going to live with that. And I'll just go ahead and do a couple. I'll do another duplicate layer here. OK, so I'm now, I'm now modifying the upper layer. I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation, Command U or Control U, and play around with a couple variations. That's pretty cool. I like that really pop kind of value uh, purple. Um, if I turn that layer off, my selection is still on. Cool. I can select my second copy. Um, go to Hue and Saturation, and let's turn this into more of an ochre. Uh, yellowish ochre kind of tone. Let's see what we get here. I think something in there. And I'm going to pull the saturation down to get it into this more mm, rustier kind of value tone. Ooh, play around. A little bit leathery looking, which is nice. A little greenish. Well, push. You can also push the vibrancy again, the saturation upward, vibrant. Make it more vibrant. 
Um, so there's a couple of variations there. All right. So oh, let's leave it there. Something like that. That little rusty yellow kind of look. Um, so there's a couple of variations, and um, I'm going to go deselect that. Command D on your keyboard will deselect your selection. So again, here we've not modified our chair, the, the back of the chair, the black part, or the shadow cast. And we've got three, um, three variations, the original red, a yellow, and a violet version. So we can do that all day long and play around. Again, going back to this chair, if I wanted to pop that into a scene, something like this scene, I've already done that here. And that's this layer. I've already popped it into this layer. And in this case, it would be very easy to just go Command U and adjust my hue or saturation. I could color match it to the, the foreground sofa, or if I want to play uh, opposites and, and uh, complementary colors on the color, color wheel or color palette, I can uh, play off of each other that way. So that's a very easy way to manipulate your colors and play around with variations. Here's some motorcycle sketching. Same thing, I've already broken out the layers on the right hand side. You can see my layers palette. I've already got some, some variations. Go ahead and zoom in. Uh, this one in the top right, if I go to hue and saturation again, uh, command U, control U on the PC. And you can see I could just quickly look at, what does this look like as a blue motorcycle, cool. Notice that the, 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 the black and white parts are modifying because we're just affecting the whole layer. We don't have an isolated selection. So again, if I need to be more precise, take more time um, than I'm allowing for in this video, uh, then I need, to, uh, I need to do a selection. So maybe I'll use the lasso. I'll do a little quick isolation of the red upper part of this. I'm going to ignore that little sketch line there. I'll grab those little sketch lines. It looks like this is the area that's most important to nail. Oops. There we go. And then selection. And I've got, let's push this into a yellow spectrum. Something for Yamaha, perhaps. Can I get that yellow? I'm not sure if I can get that yellow. There we go. We're starting to get that yellow. Oh, I should have isolated the, the seat. I made a mistake there. Well, I could cancel. Use my lasso tool. And this time, using Option on my keyboard, I'm going to deselect the seat. So this is actually re subtracting the selection from the this new selection from the other selection. So if I go back to Hue and Saturation again, I'm going to push this into that yellow-orange spectrum, bring the saturation up, and I've got something in closer to the spectrum palette of uh, something like a, a Yamaha. So there's a quick tutorial on using um, selections and tweaking your color palette really quickly off of a base sketch or, um, or using stock photography or images that you pull from the web. Hope that helps and um, have some fun. Cheers.